Hello, you beautiful people, you, and welcome back to another episode of Twisted Veil. Uh, before we get in, as always, we have a very exciting part of the episode. We have to get into announcements. Deanna, take it away. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's my time to shout. All right. Well, this week is an exciting week. We've got two exciting things going on. It's Loot Week right now, and it's the Loot Week that's in Pride Month. And I'm going to talk about both those things in a second. I just want to get you all jazzed about it. Uh, but before I go anywhere else, I want to give a shout out to our partner, Nine Realms Gaming. Uh, they create top-notch gaming accessories from the finest woods this realm has to offer. And by gaming accessories, I mean things like dice vaults, dice towers, dice trays, and hero vaults. You can visit their website now and use our exclusive partner code at Lyre10, L-Y-R-E-10, to get 10% off at NineRealmsGaming.com. And happy Pride Month, everybody. Okay. <laughs> if you notice in chat, there's been a change to one of our emotes during the month of June. Our snonk heart emoji, which is our heart emoji, has been altered to celebrate Pride Month. Once again, happy Pride Month. I'm bi. I'm jazzed. Everyone's having a great time. <laughs> All right, you can follow us on social media. If you use command socials, you can check out Ink and Liar on all of our social channels. Or if you want to follow the cast, you can use command Twisted Cast, and you can follow the entire cast of Twisted Veils. Twisted Veil singular. <laughs> you can also... Um, don't forget to contribute the scrolls to our community challenge that is still happening so that we can bring Snock tarot card from our Fates End show into the world. We are getting there. We are donating our channel points to this great group project. Uh, we made progress on our goal of 800,000 points, and we are trucking towards that tarot card, and we absolutely can do it. I'm very certain. All right. Uh, I'm going to talk, talk, talk about sound here for a second. The things that you will hear that are not me yelling very soon are music and our ambiance uh we want to shout out sirenscape for the ambiance sounds and music and their online player that we use on stream and we also want to shout out ounces music who is a musical artist that's responsible for most of our soundtrack brent actually specifically commissioned them to make music for the show if you like his stuff or you really want to hear how awesome the rest of his music is you can check him out on bandcamp twitter instagram or soundcloud at ounces music uh you can subscribe to us on YouTube to catch up on all of our shows with command YouTube. And if you like our show or any of our shows, you can join us on Discord, just free. You can come chat with our community and our cast. You can check out McBluff, who's just trucking out. I'm so wildly jealous of McBluff because they'll be watching an episode and she'll send us this piece of fan art. She's like, while you were monologuing, I drew this. And I'm like, I can't. I can't believe it. But you should join just to look at how fantastic our community is. It's really great. Uh, there are links to our Discord in the About tab on our Twitch profile, or you can pull it up by using the command Discord, exclamation point, Discord. All right. Um. Okay. It's Loot Week. I said it's Pride Month and Loot Week, so you've got a lot of happiness going on. Uh, tonight for Loot Week, which is the week that on our channel we give away free stuff on each one of our shows uh, and tonight we're giving away an explorer society fate deck that it should be showing up on screen soon so that you can give a give a gander to it uh, we want to thank weird games for sending this to us and without them we couldn't have this amazing giveaway this evening you can check them out at weirdgames.net weird-games.net or use command weird in chat to check out their through the reach tabletop setting and um system which is what we use for twisted veil weird is w-y-r-d uh, and we're going to go ahead and start the giveaway now you should see it pop up in chat in just a moment and you can use command loot exclamation mark loot to enter the giveaway for the explorer society fate deck you have to be a follower to enter you gotta hit the heart and we will announce the winner of the giveaway after break so i'm very excited about that i love the fate decks they have beautiful art and I'm very excited for whoever wins. All right. Radical, radical, radical. I think I've only got two things left. The first is, so we have this very exciting week this week, which is Pride Loot Week. Uh, <laughs> but then next week is our, our week of rest, our, our week-long Sunday. Uh, the entire team at Ink and Liar has been working hard. And starting this Friday, so we're not getting a short rest this week, I don't believe. We're going to be taking a short break break so no short rest this week and no shows at all next week as we all 
hibernate mostly just sleep in the summer sun see our family for the first time in years <laughs> uh no we're just taking roughly a week off from june 4th to june 11th and we'll be back on the 14th of june thank you brent that was beautiful i always appreciate your contributions <laughs> All right, I'm mostly done yelling. Now I've got to get into a slightly serious topic. So, this is something you hear me say every week. Viewer discretion is advised. Twisted Veil is intended for mature audiences and engages with themes that could be potentially triggering for people. Um, consumer discretion is advised. And if anything that I list here sounds like something that you are right now not in the headspace to deal with, or just a topic that you're like, I'm not personally comfortable engaging with this in this moment, you and your mental health is the most important thing. You make the best choice for you. We will see you soon, and we love you, all right? All right, so blanket. There is always the possibility of violence, gore, drug use, adult themes, adult language, sickness, horror, gaslighting, and various phobias. Uh, Through the Breach takes place partially in the real world and is set in 1902. Twisted Veil acknowledges the traumatic events that happened during this time, and in an effort not to erase this, it may come up in game. In this episode, there will be some discussion of an asylum that is reflective of the time period, so uh, we're not going there tonight. We won't be dealing with that at length, but there will be some discussion, just so you know. I believe that that's all I have to to scream at clouds about. So I'm I'm gonna throw this back to Brent. Don't forget about the giveaway. Join the giveaway. <laughs> yeah, uh, join it up. Get the second best deck because we all know the Neverborn is the best guild or the best uh, faction. I like the Explorer Society. They're cool. I adore them. They're amazing. Uh, English Ivan is my favorite character the entire game, but my heart rests within the Neverborn. Uh, <laughs> but in the meantime, gather your script. We'll board that train and head into a chill, character-driven downtime episode of Twisted Veil. Vale. So, where we last left off, the party had an evening of cigars, drinks, and conversation with the one and only Colette Dubois. Here, our old friend, Mr. Our old friend, Mr. Vogel, also known as the Wolf to the party, showed up to pay the party for their services. Ellie received a bunch of money, Nemo asked for help with a possible job, and Toby asked for ways to use this new power to attack the guild. Afterwards, Meave invited everyone to a seance and had an interesting conversation with Frey about the Neverborn. During the seance, Nemo's nighttime friend showed up and communicated with the party and informed Nemo that the reason she wasn't dead was because of him. So, today our scene starts the following morning after the seance. You've all woken up, no doubt, with quite a bit on your mind, and the scene is yours. 
I will say that Maeve is probably either still asleep or half asleep. <laughs> Just kind of in bed. Has not bothered to get up yet at this point. Given I would that believe that they, they didn't home. change into their pajamas last night. They just stayed in there. That's a hundred percent correct. Yeah, they are just in bed in their clothes. <laughs> Nemo watched the door last night, as, as she usually does. Uh, and she's just watching everybody as they wake up, just seeing if there's anybody. Just if anybody wants to. And then she looks at the floor a lot. Think. Tobias, probably wake up. <clears throat> so, uh, <clears throat> uh, Nemo, that was a kind of big night you had last night, huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, thank you for thank you for being there. I mean, yeah, I'm always happy to happy to I'm always happy to help. Um, you know, we 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 learn anything. About your nighttime friend? Is he coming back to visit? Is he, uh... I mean, I don't... I mean, like I said, I don't think... I don't think you're in any trouble at all. So, you should be fine, so... Okay. Okay. Um, alright, as, 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 as long as you're fine, I'm fine. Um... But yeah, he... I mean, he wants me to do something. It's kind of comforting, I think, just to know that I'm, you know, that's something for me to be doing, so... Mm. Did you want something? I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's it's uh, it's I'm I'm, I'm glad that you're okay because uh, I actually had a bit of a favor to ask. Okay. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, what? What's up? I need your help with uh, with a little task I'm planning to do later tonight. Bake. It's... Yeah, but it's uh, you know, you can't can't let the cat out of the bag just yet. We're gonna. Uh, don't worry, I'll tell you all about it when we get there. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just uh, meet me at the. Uh, we'll 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 leave here when we're ready. Don't worry. Okie dokie, Tobias. <laughs> and with that, Tobias is gonna go get some eggs because you know it's it's been a long night, dude. He's hungry. Bray would probably wake up. <laughs> And more or less check on Meeve. Mm. He, he doesn't necessarily want to wake them up, but like they were kind of in and out last night, yeah. and you know, just just check and see, like breathing, general peaceful sleeping going on. Yeah, Meeve is doing that thing, you know, when you wake up and you're like, oh hell no, and you go back to sleep, but then you wake up again and you're like, <sighs> and that's kind of where Meeve is. So Meeve looks up at Frey and is like, hey. How you doing there? I'm alright. Would it be too cheeky of me to ask you to bring me something from breakfast? Uh, I'll bring you the Frey special. It'll be alright. I'll be please right back. don't. Please do not. Frey walks Just out Fred, the door. Frey! <laughs> alright. <clears throat> you guys head back out into Ronin's bar. Uh, this clutter clutterfuck of a, a bar where like a lot of it's like old crates stacked up in the corner uh the piano that kit was working on is completely done and ronin is currently standing next to kit like no no, no you you don't have to fix anything else and, and kit looks very upset and she's like i need to find a pianist to play the piano and kit is angrily tapping on the keys making no music whatsoever and she's like no 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 you you're good at some things this is not one of your skills and and kit huffs and tuffs and stomps off and she sees you guys come out and she says oh breakfast you got me to break something give him something and she do. she points at kit <laughs> <laughs> I would love some breakfast. Eggs, bacon, toast, please. I got a big day ahead of us. Uh, me and Nemo. So I'm around here. You can whip up some eggs. Uh, Bloody Mary, if you need it. Bacon, short supply out here in the quarantine zone. Um, I mean, some folks serve bacon, but it's not pig. 
I'll leave it at that. I, I've eaten worse. I've eaten a lot worse. As long as it's alive when it was dead, when it was killed, I'll be good. Well, we don't serve dead human around here, so. Not, not human. Oh, wait. That's. Yeah, uh, yeah. A few places they find some zombies, cut them up, and yeah. Sure, it's very. I'm glad we don't do that here. That's great. Tender and flavorful. Could I have a Bloody Mary, please? Of course. Uh, she goes back behind the bar, begins to kind of whip some stuff up. There's not really a kitchen in this bar. So she goes outside with a cast iron skillet, some eggs, uh, starts a campfire up in the cave and just sort of throws it onto like the, the old coals that are still lingering and burning and lights up the fire and cooks it outside, leaving you guys alone to yourself for a few moments. Eventually, she comes back in with the eggs, serves them on like uh, little metal plates that she throws out in front of you, uh, gives you a Bloody Mary. All of your drinks are served in metal cups. They got like kind of that tin flavor when you drink them. But yeah, you, you get a nice red thick tomato juice uh, with a celery stick sticking out of it, Nemo. Not spicy, because Bloody Marys are ruined when you put spice in them. <laughs> That's my personal opinion, and in my world, there's no spice in the Bloody Marys. Trevor's going to disregard that statement, and Frey <laughs> is going to order one last thing. I need six raw eggs in one of the tin cups. I need a little hot sauce in there, and a uh, little salt and pepper, whatever you got. You want me to break those eggs open or just leave yeah, them yeah break them break them open that's fine we don't need the shells there's this weird moment where she's behind the bar looking at you with her cowboy hat just not breaking eye contact corked brow putting six eggs in salt pepper tabasco the equivalent of tabasco in 1902 whatever that may be um some hot sauce of source and then just puts it down in front of you but doesn't go back behind the bar but just stands there to watch to see if this this psycho this serial killer is going to drink <laughs> this crazy concoction that they've ordered yeah i'll down it <laughs> i I'm not actually going to put me through that. They don't want that. I will chug the raw eggs. <laughs> That's very sweet of you. If Meeve was you there, then... Beefy? No. <laughs> Meeve is not Gaston <laughs> from Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> Ronin says, Well, that's my entertainment for the day. And goes back behind the bar. Cheers. All right. And I grab a plate of eggs with toast and go back to the room all right meve is there waiting that Offer doesn't look me. like an entire glass of raw eggs and disgustingness thank you Frey. i know i know i listen just try it eventually maybe not after a, the se seance I, I think i know that word seance mm -hmm. yeah maybe not after one of those but uh you know, sometimes you feel a little rat, a little too much whiskey. Yeah, maybe a hangover cure. I'll yeah. be all right then. Yeah. I'm just gonna. Um, <clears throat> do you want any any of this? Do you, did you have breakfast? No, you go out with them, and I'm just gonna eat here, and then yeah. probably go back to sleep. Yeah, I, I chugged my breakfast. We're good. Okay, thank you, Frey. <laughs> feel better, <laughs> and I will take back off back to Tobias and Nemo. While while Frey was away, I'm gonna sit across from Toby at, at one of the little tables to kind of Nemo's feet don't touch the ground. She's a very short person and I'm assuming these are like bar stool kind of situations and kind of kick him in the ankle and say, you trying to rob somebody? Not trying to rob somebody. <clears throat> We're gonna rob them of their leads, I guess. Right. And you want to do it at night. Why? 
You want to be as visible as possible. Is that the idea? No, not visible. We're trying to break. We're trying to break into the Tatlow office. I'd like to break in, see, get leads that they have that I can then broadcast. You know. So if I can. What? Are you then you broadcast? I mean, I uh, I uh, dabble no, here and there. You dabble. Yeah. Right. Have you ever broken in some place before, man? No. Right. Usually it's better to do it during the day when there are other people there. Uh, so then you're just another person. Okay. Do you know anything? Is the place guarded at night? Or do you really think it's going to be completely empty? Nobody on the streets, no marshals out. And it might actually be better to do this during the day when uh, the reporters are out. It might actually be better to do this during the day when the when the reporters are out. Oh, that's a uh, great idea, Tobias. Yeah, and the reporters are out because in at night they're in there printing papers for the next day. That's you know now now we're thinking ahead. We should we should do this soon. We should do this. Uh, uh, Nemo, give me give me a uh, target number ten pickpocket check. Oh, okay. So th this this is a representation. You've you've been in this building before, and you are actually uh, dealing with something that is kind of your expertise. So using pickpocket, this is just like you I thinking a, back on your memories, casing the joint. I got a twelve of crows. You're thinking about it. Uh, the tattler on the base floor doesn't have a lot of security because the base floor is where they keep the printing presses. It's loud. It's a, a roaring, whirling gears pulled by rubber belts. Should be very, very easy to sneak around because it's super cluttered. However, uh, the main office where Nelly was, where Tobias used to work, uh, is actually... Like, they're shouting and everything. There's a lot of cubicles, but it's very well lit. Uh, a lot of the offices have, like, glass doors in front of them. So you might be able to work something and steal something from an office, but it, it's, it's not, like, a long-term thing. You're not going to be able to sit in there for two or three hours because eventually someone's going to see you. And then there's the complication of, like, what if they come back? What if they come into the office? But... Yeah. You you think uh, if you were to go stealthy, you could probably sneak in? Toby, uh, uh, well, he's that's... hasn't yeah. hasn't been the best at that. Kind of two things, Tobias. So, all right, if we go by day when there are people there, it'll be a lot easier, but we won't be able to necessarily get exactly what you want if you want a specific thing. We'll be able to get something, but maybe not spend a lot of time. So we would want to go by night which is more difficult but we have a longer time secondly for a long time i worked in a team two people loud one quiet one mm. and i'm assuming that maybe you might be better at being loud than quiet yeah i can be the face you know i can, I can distract whoever it is while you sleep while you sneak in the back you know it's uh you know, i think this will work out we will we, we'll be a team we'll be j just like the old days huh nemo Nemo has a second of what old days are you talking about? But then you're, she's gonna... Your old days, of course. Yeah. I do want to... Like I said, we won't necessarily be able to go for anything specific. But I'd like to take a look for... Or, or if you have anything that you know about it. Have you ever written anything about the... um? the institution of mental correctness is that something that's ever showed up in the tatler before toby give me a target number eight history or a target number nine literacy check uh i rolled a nine so that gives me a 10 for literacy the institution of mental correctness uh you just know what has been written by the papers. A lot of times this is seen as a safe haven, a, a place where people who have suffered mental trauma from the Neverborn are sent. You don't know anything too uh, deep about it, what really goes on there. The Tattlers have been pretty hush-hush about it, but in, in papers during your 
employment before you were fired uh this is all that comes to mind mm -hmm. i mean you know it's uh institute of mental correctness it's uh you know, so it's where they lock away or where they they well depends who you're gonna believe you believe the papers is gonna say they they bring sunshine and rainbows to people who have been visited by neverborn but you know don't believe everything you read in the papers just for people who are visited by neverborn i mean that's what they say okay well yeah if i if you hear anything else out about it like, if it comes up at any point, just let me know. And I'll see. Maybe Nelly will have a big old folder marked IMC on her desk, and I can just take that, but... No, I no, mean, what you're talking I... about, Sam. <clears throat> I know there's a lot of stuff that they don't, that they aren't allowed to print in the papers that they collect information on. That's mainly what we're going after right now. Do they keep that in the offices, though? Or do they have some sort of... I don't know, basement or something. I mean, Nellie's the editor. She has a uh, final say on what gets printed. Right. Okay. Yeah, this sounds doable. Yeah. No, I can do that. Hey, Frey. Hey there. How's it going? Okay, fine. <laughs> this is awful. Do you want it? And I'll slide the Bloody Mary over, over to Frey. I'm going to taste it, taste that there's no spiciness whatsoever, and just put it back on the bar. Just politely, just, I'm all right. Tomato juice and liquor. I'll take the raw eggs. <laughs> I mean, if no one else is going to drink it, you know, we need some protein for the day, and he's going to fucking start sipping on it. That's really just tomato juice and, uh, and liquor. There's no spiciness whatsoever. <laughs> ah, I don't yeah, see why they feel the need to cut the liquor is the thing. Right, yeah. Bring out the flavor of the liquor. Anyway, what's up? Where are we off to? Ray. How good are you at keeping a secret? I got plenty. Are they a secret? Yeah, it's is it black blood or a little bit better kept? That's a little tougher to keep once I get cut. Yeah. It's gonna lean into Nemo. Nemo, what you think? Need some muscle? That's a terrible. We can tell him where we're going without bringing him. Like, we don't. The more people you bring, the more visible it is. I think. <laughs> well, it's your it's your thing. Like, she's not lowering her voice at all. <laughs> like your thing. You can do whatever you want. All right, Frey. We're about to do some activities crime and otherwise all right are you looking for help at all i didn't mean to just walk in on this i just thought i was just coming back to you guys uh, <laughs> if you want help you just let me know thank you we we not that we don't want help it's just that you're very uh noticeable mm. with with the uh so is it the hat or the eyes i don't both? Oh, the teeth, God I think it. it's both. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. your teeth are fine. I was saying Ellie's teeth are falling out of her head, and me is an invalid, I think, at this point. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll stick with them. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Probably a better can... option, yeah. You must used to get, like, really uncomfortable. Uh, we can, like, get lunch or something afterwards. Tell you what, you, you just let me know how it goes. Yeah. You, you stick here. You nurse me back to health. We'll meet you for lunch. It won't take that long. Yeah, you all got the tab, right? He's going to reach into his pocket. And uh, Moth flies out. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I thought breakfast was part of our rent here. <laughs> is it not? Oh, is I it? I don't have any money. <laughs> rent? Is it part <sighs> of our rent? Or do we have to pay for breakfast? <laughs> Ronin's like, I'll put it on your tab. <sighs> we're, gonna do, we're out doing some business. We'll be back. Uh, oh. Back and we'll be rich. Yeah. All right. Pocket I'm going to go back to the room. Don't don't make me do dishes, y'all. Let's get us some money. 
I'll head back to the room now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You, you would see at that point that Mavid ate most of their breakfast, set the rest on the floor, rolled over, and went back to sleep. <laughs> Got really interesting company. Love it. Yeah. Sorry, Frey. It's all good. Frey has not had a moment with his thoughts alone yet. So two yeah. people passed out on some beds. I'm going to eat the rest of your breakfast. Um, <laughs> Valid. Yeah. Waste not, want not. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just make sure you're all good. Yeah, Maeve uh, is just tired. You spend uh, the evening, Frey, with two unconscious people and a very disgruntled robot who comes in and basically is trying to explain to you all their grievances in a series of beeps and whistles. And uh, very violent hand gestures. Uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, that's awful, yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It, it, it's How just like God damn. whistle, whistle, scream, scream, hand gesture, <gasps> point, point, whistle, whistle. My but God. <laughs> at the end of the day, those little arms wrap around your ankles and it hugs you. <laughs> Very happy that someone finally listened to it. And it does do a se- several rude gestures to Ellie. <laughs> Lovely. Meanwhile, oh God, it's so cute. <laughs> I love him. I wish I was nicer and I could be friends with the robot. <laughs> he has a lot of, a lot of, a lot of pent up emotions that uh, he has a hard time explaining. Uh, but meanwhile, you guys. Uh, so you said you're going to wait till nighttime. We were thinking of going during the day. It sounds like this is. Tobias is rodeo, but Nemo gave her two. It's up to you. Uh, Tobias, you've worked here for a very long time. I I will tell you, like, at night, the Tattler has a very strong military guild presence. In the daytime, not so much, but at night, like, the guild realizes the importance of news and information and It'll be a different monster you'll have to handle. You'll ha- you'll be dealing with soldiers instead of employees. Okay, so let's not do that. Um, hey, let's go during the day. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna say as we're going over there, how attached to you, uh, your pride are you? My pride. Yeah. Like, if you would you feel? Bad or uncomfortable being the kind of person who marched into your old workplace and demanded to speak to the manager who fired you and threw a big temper tantrum that lasted 20 to 25 minutes. We want to get Nelly out of her office. Well, you demand to speak with her because she treated you so poorly and you're not going up to her. You've got to stand there until she comes down, yeah? Okay. I mean, we don't have to do it. If your pride can come first, if you want, it's just an offer. I think the truth comes first, first of all. Uh, and getting those secrets is gonna take. Uh, getting those secrets is gonna take some doing. Um, do we have a? We don't have a performance check, do we? No. Uh, you have deceive. Right. Yeah, the witch. I mean, actively lying to people about how angry I am might come in handy. <laughs> uh, okay. This Unless might work you have out. another plan. Yeah. No, this might work out. We're going to go up there. And I am very upset about how they just fired me for nothing. Like, I haven't been there for years. Uh as they, they weren't papers cashing for them. those checks from your dad, yeah. And then they just throw away, like, nothing. How dare they? Like, I haven't made I've made enough uh, value for myself. And uh, he's going to, you know, stomp off. Stomp off towards the Tattler. I'm getting I'm getting in character, Nemo. Uh, stomp off towards the Tattler. Nemo's going to wait behind for a second. She's going to feel something. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't felt for a very long time, and then she is going to uh, follow a little bit behind, fully stealthing at this point. All right. Uh, you guys make your way through the downtown to the tall red brick building of the Tattler. You can see the bronze letters sort of uh, 
Not sort of, but basically on the top, they just have like the stands and it just says the tattler across the top rim and these big 10 foot tall letters. Uh, the single doors swing open. Toby, you walk in and you hear the familiar rush of printing presses. Uh, a man sort of comes out uh, holding his glasses, looking at you. You notice him as the chief printer, Eddie Jones. He's talked to you guys before and he's like, but like you can't really hear what he's saying he's like pointing at you and there's just the screaming roar of the printing presses and he points to his office and leads you guys there i am hey, fully Nemo. stealthed i am not we're, we're Nemo, not together. give me a target number eight stealth check okay if there's other people around i have advantage on the check there are other people working the printing presses, so you I have advantage. I got a advantage. 17 of crows, and which means that if I choose to attack anyone, I will get advantage on that attack. Just to let oh, you know that I'm man. a trigger go off. But <laughs> uh, you are a ghost. Like like you immediately swip into this big compact lower floor. No one notices you amongst the roaring machines, and you find like a nice little nook, like a pathway where you can just walk around and look. Toby, you are led into uh, the office of Eddie Jones, and he's like, Hey, Toby, what are you doing back here, man? I thought you were fired, huh? I am fired, but I won't stand for it. I want to see Nelly right now. I have a few choice words to say to her. Uh, I mean, I can't let you up to the office. No, you're, you're going to go get her. You're going to go get her down and bring her down here. Uh, yeah, no, no, I no, ain't no. standing for how I was treated. Uh, and I ain't standing for you to be here bossing me around. I don't work for you anymore. You get the manager right now. <laughs> All right, Karen. <laughs> <laughs> Do a target number eight intimidate check. Intimidate? Okay. I, I feel like this is this is kind of you're kind of being intimidating. Mm -hmm. I am so intimidating. I just rolled the red joker. Uh <laughs> He sees the fire in your eyes and he's like, whoa, 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 whoa. All right, you know, you were a respected employee and between you and me, I I thought your articles were really good and I was sad to see you go. There's, there's no right. need to, Toby, there's no need to yell. Let's do this between no, friends. I'll, I'll, I'll save my yelling for who it's directed to, thank you. And give him a fucking on the shoulder. I think she deserves it. I think, you know, she 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 fucked up letting you go. She yeah, fucked yeah. up letting you go. Your replacement, not nearly as good. Articles dry, don't sell as much. Five percent reduction in paper sales since you left. Just yeah, just yeah. just want to throw that out there. Thanks for that. Throw that out I'll, there. I'll let her have it. I'll let her have it. Uh, so he leaves and goes to get Nelly uh, with a red joker because we did talk about you guys being able to do a little bit of stuff. Is there anything small, anything you want to do to kind of add to that that you feel the 5% reduction in paper selling isn't red joker enough? Uh, I think I'm going to I like, I like to snoop around. I'm in his office. Let me snoop around a little bit uh, while I'm in here. <sighs> Look for the, 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 the same sort of shit uh, that Nemo is about to look for. Uh, secrets the Gil doesn't want getting out. Things he's like, ah, I'm not sure if we can print this. The Gil might not like it. You know, things like that. Things of that nature. And I'll any, say, any, oh, sorry, any blackmail on him. You know, if, if he's got some, uh, some, some dirt buried in his drawers. Yeah, does he have a wedding ring hidden in his top drawer or anything <laughs> like that? Uh... I'll definitely say there are some pay stubs. Uh, in your you you find that uh, he makes a lot less than you thought he did. Uh, he just yeah. has a raise. <laughs> yeah, he makes a lot less. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a lot of information. Um, there's like like his office is almost like a tool shop where there's you know different like metal letters and stuff and tools to switch out during the printing presses. They just kind of tell him what to print and he does it he doesn't really have a lot of information down here I'm but gonna... i will give nemo advantage on future stealth checks all right i'm gonna pocket the lo the uh lowercase e as many lowercase e's as i can find just to start taking all all the lowercase e's yeah <laughs> you you collect like a dozen right, I'm gonna like... stick them in pockets <laughs> a pocket of lowercase e's yeah 
<laughs> that, that serves them right for firing me. Uh, Nemo, while this is going on, are you going to try to sneak up? I am going to... Is, like, the, do I see Nelly coming down the stairs at all? Because I'm essentially waiting for Nelly to exit before I do that swap, right? Um... You see Nelly come down and give me a target number eight notice check with disadvantage due to the machinery. Okay. Uh, what is my um, target number? Eight. Okay. I got a 13 of masks. With disadvantage? Yeah, yeah, bitch. You know I did. I'm real good at Wow. <laughs> This is my job! Watch me get the Black Joker. But right now, this is my job! At this point in time, it's so loud that, like, you're essentially lip-reading. You, you can make out, like, muffled sounds, but you've done jobs like this so much that you're just reading lips. Uh, what you pick up is Nelly has kind of like a young suspender wearing flat cap kid following her, and she's, like, shouting to him... And you make out the following. Uh, outbreaks are nothing new in the QZ. What's more important is the headline. I want bold print. Three exclamation marks at the end. Local resurrectionist saint causes plague to spread the QZ to fuel possible undead attacks. Does the phrase resurrectionist saint mean anything to Nemo? The way that it does to Deanna, her deepest heart. <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, resurrectionists are, but no, not resurrectionist saint. Okay. Okay. Uh, Nemo is going to, while she's hiding, she's going to, because she knows she has a spotty memory, she's going to take her little journal out of her deep pocket and write down what she had before she's going to duck upstairs. Um and go for Nelly's office. Do I need another stealth check to get up there? You do. There's people around, and Toby got the red joker, so it's triple like advantage. triple advantage. It's uh, target number eight. Or we'll, we'll say nine, because there's like glass doors and everything around here. All right, so that's a 19 of crows. Again, I get, I think at this point, double advantage on attacking anybody if I wanted to. <laughs> you're, you're, you're amazing. You're a ninja. Like... People are walking around, there's like cubicles everywhere, and you're just sw swerving in between the cubicles. Um, as you're moving through with your crazy roll, you do see Toby's old office, which no longer has his name. What uh, name does it have on it? It has the name... Simon Duffy, apprentice, editor, and lead writer of Guild Relations. Oh my god. Oh my god, this guy. Uh, which, if you remember, Toby's... Toby's office right. just used to say... It I just remember used to say Simon Duffy is. <laughs> you do. You do. Uh, you met him back in the fighting pits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I did. Doing the exact same crime that he later turned Toby in for. So, yeah. Yep. If I have time after I'm done getting stuff from Nelly's office, I would like to go in and set some of his stuff on fire. But I don't think I probably <laughs> have time for that. <sighs> uh, meanwhile, we cut back to Toby. <laughs> Toby, Ellie comes down. She's wearing her flat cap, red hair, just sort of poofing out under it. And she says... Toby, Toby, yeah, it's good to see you. How you doing? You know, uh, I haven't seen you in a while. What's up? What can I do for yeah, you? Yeah, it's it's good to see me, isn't it? Yeah, it's good to see me not working for you anymore. That's nice after you fucking fired me. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Toby, you have to understand it's just business, right? You may yeah, breach your contact. From what I hear, from what I hear, paper sales are down 5% since uh, since you fired me. That look, That's real good for business, is that, is, isn't it? Isn't it, Nelly? Toby, the resurrection are going papers. crazy. I love selling less paper. That was my favorite thing to do for you. Sell papers. But now you got someone better doing it? Someone better do 5% less? Good job, Nelly. I can't believe. Can't believe. Good, good, good thinking coming from you. Look, I understand you're angry. I understand you're angry, all right? That's fine. That's fine. If, if you want to get this out of your system, that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. even though I fired you, I consider you a good friend. So you just, 
you you let it all out let it hit me you know we'll we'll say this is off the record right and like i won't write anything about this and what you're doing and when you come in here and whatnot Good. It doesn't matter. I'm a nobody. I can't even sell papers. Who cares what they? Who cares if you write about me? Um, he's going to go on and on and on about how horrible of a work environment it was, and how he was the best thing that ever happened to to the tavler, and and on and on and on. Um, Nelly's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I hear you. I hear you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh, I I I understand your frustration. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, all right. So meanwhile, we cut back to Nemo. Uh, you find Get into the office. Da, 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 da. You're going to need to make a pickpocket check to bust that lock open. Uh, lock picking check? Because I have advantage on lock picking checks. I don't on pickpocketing. Mm. But if it's it, you said busting open a lock, that sounds lock, like lock picking. picking yes. Me. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> lock picking is an expertise. Pickpocketing is in training. Yep. Yeah. Oh, lock picking. Yes. Uh, yes. target number eight. You have advantage. Awesome. I'm going to get the Black Joker at some point. Awesome. I got a... What is my lock picking? I got a 12. Um, All right. Tomes or Rams. I got the same both times. Easily, easily. You easily pick it, but this is not an easy pick. This office is probably about like four feet separated from the cubicles. And you have to like come in, pick dip back into the cubicles when you hear like people walking around this place is really busy it's not super loud but like there's people walking all over the place like hey hey you got to get the, these letters down to, to the print like like it's a very fast moving environment but you easily perfectly manage to like hear footsteps pick dip back pick tip back and eventually you pop it open you shut the door quietly behind you go inside it's a little bit dark uh because the lights aren't on in here but the lights from the outside easily reflect into the window glass you see a bunch of notes just spread over nelly's desk i want to look specifically for uh the resurrectionist saint if it's specifically a story that she's trying to spin i'd like that's to exactly what's that. on her desk right now okay. that's what she was talking about you start flipping through it you're reading it um so oh i'm not reading i'm just grabbing stuff I, all right you're grabbing I'm it not, you're you're Nemo shoving it yourself smart enough to figure out what is important and what isn't important if there's anything also like if she has like a rejected pile of like we can't publish this i want to take those Give me a target number 10 literacy check. <laughs> what is literacy? <laughs> or, is or, yeah, it's intellect. So, uh, that's going to be a three plus zero. So that's a three. You, you are out of your environment, right? There's like all these cabinets that have like, you know important not important there's dates and everything and what you're just like not opening <laughs> reverse psychology maybe i should take the stuff that's not important you're opening the not important like looking at them starting to shove them in but they're all just like they're ads they're just like <laughs> simple ads L like like okay shit not actually important like you're kind of out of your element trying to find the dirt but you have no idea what the organization system is in here um Meanwhile, downstairs, Toby, you continue your rant. It kind of comes to an end, and Nelly says, "You got gumption." One, one last thing. At, at, at the at the very end of my rant, the very end of my rant, I'm gonna say, "Hey, you know, I was the only one who was making sure the printing press is working every after every paper I printed. You know, I hope it doesn't break down on you. I hope, um, I hope it doesn't break down. It's been going for so long with no one looking at it." Good luck. Good luck when it, when it finally kicks the bucket. Toby, Toby, I get what you're saying. You're very upset. You have a lot of emotions going on. And me, as a professional editor of this newspaper, I always try to to take my emotions out of it. You know, I just, I, I, I try to print the truth. Maybe, instead of all those emotions, if you were a better reporter, you wouldn't have been fired. We'll just leave it at that, right? We'll leave it at that. You know, you got your emotions out. Uh, I got I got my final say in. That's fine. That's great. You know, uh, we're not going to print anything bad about you anymore. You know, it, what was done is done. Uh, Simon Duffy has been doing an excellent job. He really has good relationships with the guild. And you know what? You know, next time, just be a little better. Be a little better. Be a little mm. better at your job. 
Oh, don't worry. Don't worry. I'll be better at my job. He's going he's gonna to start walking away. He's going to start walking away. But he's going to be muttering. A hey, uh, concept. A hey, concept. And yeah, he's walking away from her at this point. Uh, she's in the office and concept says, Hmm. What an interesting, interesting development. You rang, O Benevolent One. Hey, we, we, we know no one's been looking at those at those uh, printing presses. I've been I was doing up keep uh, between uh, between papers between reporting. Maybe they just got too dirty. Maybe they got jammed up. Maybe they just got uh, a little explosive. I mean, I suppose a few of them could break. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know. You know. I like the way you're thinking. Stop the presses for a while. Stop the presses. We gotta buy. We gotta buy Nemo some more time too. All right. Uh, based on your point chart, how many points are you spending? Am I spending? Yeah, I can. I can bring out your character thing. Try to. If, I know if I got can. eight points right now. Well, if you can, I think this would probably be like a two or three pointer. That sounds right. That sounds fair. Uh, a few I don't know moments. what this means, but I'm very concerned. Just for the this is, it, shh, you can't hear it. It's fine. You're you're busy with the papers. <laughs> this is definitely going to be a three pointer. I'm looking at okay. the rules now. Okay. Um, you say that, and you start like walking to the door. Nelly starts walking, feeling like very haughty, haughty, and all of a sudden, yeah, like two of the printing presses just break the gears start grinding ink starts spewing out work hands start like running towards it trying to stop it they're just getting sprayed their face blacked with ink like fuck 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 and she's like shut it down shut it down and, and like chaos just ensues do i hear the chaos ensuing from upstairs you do hear the chaos ensuing, which gives you a little bit more time. So if you want to do something else, I'll give you a check to respect what Toby did. I want to go into Duffy's office because I think I've gotten what I'm going to get from Nelly. Unless there's, is there, there's not like a safe or anything really obvious in there, right? There's just a bunch of filing cabinets. Like this isn't awesome. a, I can't I pick I, a thing. I, I feel like I got the big story about that thing that he should report on. I'm going to go to Duffy's office and see if I can just make life more difficult for him. Well, what, what's it, what's in Duffy's office? All right, uh, you managed to quickly pick the lock, get inside. I want to, is there a way I can pick the lock back so that it's relocked after me, so it's not immediately obvious that something has gone wrong? Yeah, they lock from the inside. Awesome. Um, it's a pretty simple office. There's a desk. There's, like, a few Chotskys. Uh, there's, like, a photo of his family... Nothing. He can't report. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to take the photo of his family, and I am going to take all of the letters off of his typewriter, and then I'm going to leave. All right, you quickly uh, take out your knife and begin to pry them out. Manage to just sweep them all into your pocket. You take the photo of him with his family, which in 1902 is much more precious than it is nowadays because it takes a lot of work to take a picture. And you make your way out. Yeah, I'm going to do I, Toby or, or Tobias. Are you already leaving? Or are you heading out the door? He was on his way out when uh, when he started talking to concept. For like once you once you are out about a block down the street, uh, a presence will appear at your side, and Nemo will just show up. She's like vibrating a little bit. Okay. You uh, you got, you got something good for me? I tried buying you all the time I could. No, it was great. What what did you actually like? Did you just like? What did you actually do to the machines? Or was that incidental? What happened? Yeah, you know, but when when I was there, I was I was checking the printing press, making sure it was in working order, you know. But now, there's no one to do it, so it must have, you know, it must have been, uh, you know, they required a little maintenance. I didn't do nothing to them. It's fine. No, you did. You did really good. You did really good. It, it reminded me a lot of. Yeah. No, it's great. Every, don't worry, everything I did was to buy you more time, so I hope you got something good, Nemo. Yeah, no, there's a couple of things. I know you know 
Simon Duffy, the piece of shit, he has a job now, kind of, except, like, bigger. He's the guild relations guy now. Um, he's in your old office. And the main thing that I saw... I mean, I grabbed a bunch of paperwork and stuff from Nelly's office. The main thing that I saw... And let me know if this means anything to you, because I don't know if it means anything to me. Is that there's a resurrectionist in the QZ. There's some sort of outbreak going out, but that the, the line that they're going for at the Tatler is that there's a local resurrectionist saint who's beginning a plague to be like make some sort of zombie army or something, make some sort of resurrectionist upright. They think that she's doing it or she's doing it purposefully as a kind of like militaristic thing. It's interesting. Mm. And I'll, I'll reach into my pockets and start bringing stuff out and handing it to him. Okay. Yeah. All right. This is good. This is good. We can uh, we can use this. We can report on this. More yeah. importantly, the world has to know this. So, yeah. Toby, uh, she hands you the paper, and you begin to kind of like flip through it and read the notes and articles. And being Nelly's notes, there's like facts, and then there's like a header where it's like how to spin it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the facts that you read is that. Some sort of religious movement has been going on where a resurrectionist apparently has the ability to speak with the mindless undead. This saint, it says in quotation marks, has apparently been creating a hidden commune where the undead and the living live in peace. And then there's notes beneath that where there's a handful of interviews with death marshals, questions about, like, is this possible? What does this mean? But all the interviews with the death death marshals insist that this cannot end well, that those who practice necromancy are always claimed by madness, according to the marshals. Mm -hmm. Something dark always speaks to them and always corrupts them. And then you hear a voice in the back of your head. Well, isn't that interesting? Since we met me, she's been, or they've been so concerned with your moral dilemma. But it looks like they will eventually go mad. Their redeeming quality, if you ask me. Mm. That's uh, interesting. Maybe we should warn Eve about this. Eve practices. Eve, Eve looks look necromancy. Like necromancy. Necromancy. Let's let's just say it. I it's mean, okay. They're, they're going around this is a safe goats. place, Toby. Necromancy. Yeah, we gotta we gotta talk to me about this. Uh, is it good Nemo. Stuff? It's yeah. this is this is the best stuff. This is the best stuff we can. So the the guild's gonna. You know, t- he's gonna take Nemo into an alley real fast. <laughs> not so we're not on the street talking about necromancy. Um, Nemo, so the the it looks like the guild's trying to get ready to attack this 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 commune where these people are just trying to live in peace. They they gotta be warned. They gotta be warned about the guild's evils. Right. Well, are you going to try to get broadcast into the QZ then? All the honest citizens of the quarantine zone. Yes. I'm going to tell them. Yes, I'm absolutely going to tell them, Nemo. <laughs> tell them as in the zombies. Is that who is them? Well, the saints got to know that someone's coming to get them, that the the, the death marshals are coming to our planet and attack. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, and it's got to be me to tell them. It has to be. Yeah, that it makes has complete to be. and total sense. Yeah. Like, you're planning on broadcasting, right? Not, like, visiting a resurrectionist. I don't have... They need to be one now. The quickest way to get a message across is to broadcast. And I know yeah. just the guy, to just the citizen to do it. Yeah, and we I'm cut there! <laughs> oh, good ending, good ending. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, with that, the scene cuts. You guys head back to your home, you know, Ronan's bar and everything. Frey, you've had a d- exhausting day <laughs> with Kit, who is now very calm and very happy. And after after that 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 embrace, that hug, is just like a little eager toddler leaning you around, leading you around the bar, like 
pointing to the piano that it fixed, pointing to the different holes in the wall that it fixed. It is very, very proud and seems to just want to hang out with you and hold your hand. Mm -hmm. It's a very good job, Kit. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, God. (laughs) Nemo. Tobias, thank God. Hi. (laughs) Hi. How'd it go? It went uh, beyond well. Beyond well. Yeah, I think it went really, really good. That's great. Let's go to the room and talk. And I try to like get Kit to let go of me, but he won't. So I'm just gonna drag him. Um, he, he's Nemo he's is straight up gonna. Nemo is going to squat down. And say, "Hey, Kit, you wanna come?" Kit looks at Frey, looks at Nemo, looks at Frey, looks at Nemo. We're going to the same place, buddy. Huddles over and hugs Nemo. <laughs> I'm gonna. I know he weighs like twenty pounds, but Nemo is gonna like try to carry him over to the room. Understanding and having observed what its owner's like, Kit goes up to the bar, slams its hand a few times on the bar, and Ronan rolls her eyes and orders shots. And Kit just comes back with a shot for Frey and a shot for Nemo. Nemo gets real weird for a second and she turns to Device and says, Can... Yes, I can. Yep, I can. She's gonna take a shot damn right i mean yeah you can do that i'll get my shot later and uh we got more important things to talk about anyway alcohol later um you go uh you go into the room um or head head towards the room upon Excuse entering the even... room okay sorry upon entering the room you will see carved everywhere on the floor on the walls massive amounts of games of tic-tac-toe that Kit had been carving into the floor that we had played repeatedly <laughs> until Frey lost his mind and had to leave the room. And that's when Kit was dragging him around showing him stuff. Okay. It's been a long ass day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, don't, you you didn't have to stay here. You could have gone anywhere, but you know, that's... I applaud you keeping the robot entertained. I, I, don't, I don't know how to get rid of him, honestly, but yeah, people are doing all right in the room, so let's go. <laughs> is Meeve still asleep, or is Meeve <laughs> getting better? Or what, what is Meeve yeah, doing? I think I think Meeve is probably up at this point, but given you know the state of the day and deciding dress and stuff, they're probably in bed reading. So when you all come in, Meeve will. Hello. Go back to their book. Uh, I'm gonna lean over real quick. Are we telling? Are we telling things? Are we sharing things? Can I take the paper out of her pocket and kind of not so subtly wave it around? Yes. Is this group? Okay. Okay, so we found some very exciting things. Can I talk about it? Do you want to talk about it? You you know, you give you, you me the spotlight's yours. I, well, I mean, it's kind of your thing. I'm just, I got this from somebody's office. Okay, so she's going to sit down on a bed cross like it's Frey's bed probably sit down and cross like and start passing out these pieces pieces of paper so it wanders in with two more shots thank you i'll take one <laughs> thank you he leaves eager to get more shots so me you He's might run up our hotel not, bill <laughs> i don't know um how much do you know about the resurrectionists who are actually like within malifo considering you're like a necromancy kind of you know person not much. Kind of, um, <clears throat> I kind of keep away from the whole, you know, like, bringing, reanimating bodies and corpses and things like that. It's uh, not so much my scene. Why? Yeah, oh, have you ever heard of, like, um, Resurrectionist Jesus? Like a saint of some kind to the Resurrectionist? Is that ringing anything? Um, would I have at all, uh, Brent? Uh... With your time in the city, no. That's fair. I didn't think the- so. Yeah, Maeve just says yo. Yeah, no, um, I don't really run in the resurrectionist circles, and believe it or not, so it uh, doesn't ring a bell. Right. Well, I actually only read the headline, and I thought it was very exciting. But Tobias actually read the rest of it. So, um, if there's additional Tobias, um. The important, I guess, the important thing for you is, death marshals believe that. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this, but net people who use necromancy is uh, not good for the mental health. Um, how do you feel about that? Because they're they're the experts on this, but you know, 
And I saw you summoning some ghosts before. Uh, so how do you feel about that? Uh, like, I'm oh, sorry, go ahead, Brent. So I will say yes to Dobie's question. We've talked a little bit about what you do and how the Neverborn feel about it. Uh, I'm not going to give too much away, but yes, what Toby says makes sense. Yes. Uh, May just kind of shrugs and goes, <clears throat> well, haven't yet. Uh, and I do try to stay away from the, 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 the big stuff, you know, I mean, I feel like if I don't delve too deeply into it, but I am... Just, just talking to some ghosts here and there is, is, is not gonna degrade your sanity too much, I hope. Yeah, well, you know, I sort of, like I said before, I sort of always heard the dead. Um, so... It's not like it's something I actively pursued, and then I just got stronger at it, and now I can summon things, and... And I... I to be honest with you, Tobias, I don't really want to get much stronger at this because I have absolutely no interest in, like, permanently bringing people back from the dead and reanimating corpses and all that. I feel like that's a power I shouldn't have, and so I, I don't want it. So maybe I won't, you know? Maybe, maybe it's one of those things where the more power you have, the more power you want, and then the more power you get, the less connected to reality you are, right? How does one know if they're crazy? Well, do I seem crazy to you? Don't answer that. How does one know if they are crazy, Toby? I not. I'm not talking to you. Um, what? Not right now. Uh, oh, sorry. Like out loud. Uh, out loud. Hell, um, all right. I didn't say anything, dude. Yeah, Damn. man. All right. The the other other order of business is this lady needs to be warned. So. Uh, the guild, the Death Marshals, are planning on attack on her, her commune, um, and they're just doing their thing. They're just living their life. How dare the guild go in and ruin their good time when they're not, they're not even patrolling the quarantine zone. They just heard rumors that this lady has all these zombies there. It's, and they're living their life. They're on life. They're dead life? It's fine. Um, wait, wait, wait. Slow your roll. We got to warn a lady who lives with zombies about the gill? Nemo's going to look up from where she's reading about does the name ever come up? Brent, does the name come up of Rava? Do we hear the name? Toby has the name. I've got all the paperwork here because I was keeping it in my pocket. I've been passing it around to people. Unless T Tobias was did not want to share it at all, in which case I wouldn't. But. Uh, I don't have a reason not to share it. I, I'm all reading the notes. Yeah, uh, when you're looking through it, it does say uh, Miss Riva Cortanis. Yeah, so in which case, Frey talking about should we warn this lady? I think she seems nice. Like, she doesn't seem like a bad person, right? Uh, yeah. She well they they're they're we've seen peaceful communities in the quarantine zone. Just because they're in the quarantine zone doesn't mean that they're dangerous. Doesn't mean that they're, sure. you know, evil. Let me handle the warning. I got I got a handy dandy radio over here that's uh you know good at broadcasting. Um <clears throat> let me handle that. Uh and with that he's gonna start writing. Writing a, a strongly worded message, you know, uh, people of the quarantine zone, you know, citizens of the quarantine zone, things like that, things of that nature. Uh, and he's going to write for right now, wait for a uh, time when there's no other things going on. Like, he's going to have the radio open. Uh, brought, he's going to have the radio list, uh, playing things. Listening your, to the right now. your radio uh, gonna... frequently interrupts you by tapping you on the shoulder and making the like cut the throat gesture. What? So, like, like like that person? Like that? We're talking about them? Kill? No, we're not. We're not killing anyone right now, buddy. Don't don't worry. We're, we're trying to be the good guys. You take them off his shoulders, put them down the bed. We're gonna try to be the good guys right now and warn people of their impending doom. How does that sound? How does that sound, buddy? 
just blades, blades chopping. All right, I'm gonna need you to sit still, and it's going to uh, start tuning to uh, the dials. You know, listening for when the radio shows end uh, for some, you know, static. Maybe we'll wait, no, we'll wait till the end of the day. Uh, I think like that's good. For it's the all message. it's all just like angry black metal. <laughs> that's all you can find. Okay. Okay. <laughs> While Tobias is writing, Nemo, at least for the first part, has her station on Frey's bed, sitting cross-legged, look, looking over at Meeve. And she's going to, as he starts putting her away, lean over to Meeve and say, So do you think that then, if someone was interested in, in you know, like, abstract theory and the like, just how necromancy worked? Like, if you were born with it, do you think pursuing it was that a bad place to go I think hmm I think for one thing okay um, power is corrupting in general isn't it the more powerful you become not everyone but most people the more powerful you become the more you want power or the more likely you might be to abuse it power does corrupt so there's no reason why necromancy wouldn't be any different and then you add on to that the idea that not only can power corrupt not even just in the wrong hands but in many hands you add in the idea that this specific power can raise the dead and it becomes troublesome um thinking that it innately makes someone mad I don't know about that, but I do know that even the Neverborn hate necromancy. Um, feel I, I, I suppose they feel it's unnatural. I think there's something historically, but I don't have a lot of information on that. Um, so I don't have a good answer for you. For me, I just try to keep a handle on myself you know i think that there's not too much that you can go through that you can't come back from not maybe not all the way maybe not completely but um <sighs> with the right things you know you can get by now i don't think i'm mad and I don't think an interest in necromancy will make you mad either. Yeah, if you're if you're learning about it just to try to understand, or if you're like this um this reaver mm -hmm. person, like if, if you're, I mean, it sounds like she's helping. Yeah. People. Well, <sighs> I've said recently that um. The quote that um, hell is paved with good intentions. Sometimes, even if you're doing something to help, you can cause damage, you can cause harm. But I, I don't see it as an innately bad thing myself. And 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 going back to the study side of things, right? Um, I don't think studying something on a theoretical to understand is what's going to make you mad i i think it's the doing of it and even then it's is it or is that just what's spread about to discourage people from doing it i, I can't tell you can't tell you honestly um yeah I, I really don't know but i i don't feel that it has corrupted me not yet Tobias! Is, oh, sorry, go ahead. Nemo's going to essentially leave. She is going to stand up and she's going to kind of call Kit over to her. Hover over Tobias for a second. Hug Kit him. is standing next to you with uh, two more shots. One for you and one for Frey. I take one. <laughs> it wakes I'm... expectantly, holding it to Frey. Thank you, partner. Appreciate it. I'm going to lean over Tobias. I'm going to hug him. I'm going to hold back hands on his shoulders and say, 
I had a really good time today and I enjoy spending time with you. And then she's going to take Kit and leave the room as quickly as possible and just roam the quarantine zone for the rest of the day. <laughs> I, I enjoy spending time with you too. Hopefully we'll have more missions later on. He's saying it to the empty room as she's gone. Uh, and he's going to go back to go back to writing a script. <laughs> Tobias, um, yes. if you're busy tonight, that's fine. But I did a little bit of thinking and while I was getting ready for the seance, a little bit of nosing around i don't think we're gonna find what we're looking for about concept in the malifaux library it's all under lock and key and none of us have any real connections to get any keys from the guild yeah, not anymore unfortunately but hey. maybe if we were nice i could have got my job back i don't know maybe not don't worry I about it yeah, we don't need we don't need the talent. We got more important things going on right now. Well, I might have a place. And it also happens to be a bar, so we could bring in everyone. We don't have to go tonight, but we should go soon. Okay. I'm down. Uh I do need I do it like cuz you know, I uh I uh used used it to 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 buy Nemo more time today. Um but also it was for, it was a, it was a good thing I used it you know it was fine uh, but I did use it and it broke a lot of things at uh, at the Tatla. so you know maybe we can, maybe we can find out more effective ways to use it maybe we can find out the dangers we should be worried about you know things like that um, but yes any help you can give me I'm happy to take because yeah I don't know what we'll find but as far as things we have access to I know one place where we might have a little bit of luck. So, right. we'll go there. Appreciate it. I'm ready when you are. All right. Let's get everyone together. Uh, Nemo, how much time do you spend wandering the quarantine zone? I mean, if they're coming to gather me, I don't get very far, but essentially she's going to be teaching kit how to, she's in such a good mood she's going to be teaching kit how to move stealthily around the quarantine streets and how to see if there are things that are on guard and how to stay out of lamplight and just spending good quality time with her little buddy <sighs> give me oh all right give me a stealth I'm gonna make check you feel bad for hurting me i know give... you're gonna hurt me now and i want you to feel bad about it but I will give you a stealth check. <laughs> uh, hold on, hold on. It's uh, target number 13 with disadvantage. With disadvantage. All right. Okay. So I got um, I got an 11. I got a, uh, a 5 plus 6. An 11 of rams, I think. Hit is so enthusiastic and so ready to learn this. But Kit is a, a, a bulbous ball of metal and is trying his best to hide behind things but the gears are whirling uh, he's very very loud but like an excited puppy Kit thinks he's doing very very well he's like peeking around boxes and like his hand turns into his knife and he's like stab stab and then like he sneaks back behind a box and you hear like the clinking of metal, you can blatantly see him crawling up a ladder. And then he's like, ha I'm on the banister. And he's like, knife, stab, stab. But he does a terrible job. But he's, he, like, he's very excited to learn this. And he feels that he is a master at this point. Nemo watches Kit be just terrible about this and thinks of another very small person that she knew once upon a time who was also just terrible at this. <laughs> and some people's skills lie in different places. And, and she'll be pretty... Kit is pretty easy for you guys to find when you go to gather Nemo up. <laughs> Easier than Nemo is, certainly. And you hear she... the whirling of gears. Yeah, and you just follow the whirling of gears. Um, they didn't get very far down the street because the way that you stealth is like you ping pong, like Scooby Doo across the street. They're really close by by the time you come by. Kit just like drops off 
uh, a fire escape lands next to Ellie and is like doing stabbing gestures as Ellie takes two steps back and glares at Kit and he's like trying to be threatening. All right, let's put that away. We doing something? What's up? Frey, are you all right? Everything's good? We're going to a, to a bar, Nemo. And maybe a few other things. Do you want to come? Sure. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Great. Right. She makes a weird look at Toby and then looks in the other direction and follows the rest of the group. Uh, did, 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 does she not like me? I don't know what's happening. We had a successful mission. He's leaning into me. If... <laughs> no, no, I, I think it's quite the opposite. Yeah, no, I think she's she's fond of you. Don't worry about that. Just let her be her. All right, she's got a funny way of showing it. Okay. Some um, people do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Come on. you guys make your way into the industrial zone with Meve leading the way. And that is where we are going to take our break. But before we go to our break, if you have not signed up and did the exclamation mark loot to get that beautiful deck from the Adventurer Society uh, or the Explorer Society, do it. Do it. Do it now. This is your last chance. Do it now. If you want a beautiful deck of cards, do it now. I think... If I recall correctly, I think that CJ had something to say about the cards. Is that right? Yeah. Well, no. I mean, basically, essentially that, and I'll, I'll, I'll probably ram, you know, ramble about remind you all. One of us will remind you all to do it again when we get back from break. But the cards are gorgeous. I do not have the Explorer set yet. They are used. You can, but I do have a set here, the M3E set, and they are the same ones that are. Oh, golly, there he goes. They are the same ones that are used to play Malifaux, so you can use them for more than one thing. Um, and they are beautiful. Like this is the basic one, of course. So you're not going to see this. You're going to have characters from the Explorer Society on the cards, which is great. But um, the art on every single one of them is amazing, and um, it's really nice just to have that physical representation i'm a very like tactile person so just exclamation point loot and go ahead and get in that chat so you can win the explorer society deck have a good break good luck guys bye Hello, and welcome back. We're going straight into it with that big, boisterous clap. All right, so uh, the party has decided to follow Meve to where they think is the best place that they could find out information about concept. So, Meve, you guide the party through the downtown district into... Oh, we do. Oh, oh. shoot. We do need giveaway. To the giveaway winner. Ah, I'm so excited about stories. Sometimes I Whisper forget about on stuff. the wind. <laughs> yeah, uh, let's, Daniel, let's talk about the giveaway. Hit us, Daniel. No. Entries are closed. All We're right. Going to so, win this beautiful deck. The, yes, the entries are closed for the Explorer's Fate deck that I'm currently holding in my hands. Uh, we're going to pull a winner right now. The winner of this fabulous deck of cards is Mr. Zealous. Hey! Woo! Zealous. Good job. Congrat Yay. Congratulations to you. Uh, you are the proud recipient of this Loot Week's deck giveaway. Uh, we will be reaching out to you maybe tonight, probably tomorrow, uh, to get your contact information. We'll make sure to get this your way. Um, so congratulations and... On with the story. Nice. All right. Uh, congratulations on that. So uh, back to the story. You guys go far into the industrial zone. And following me, you find a theatrical establishment called the Explorer's Society. A small plot of gravel and dead grass has been decorated with rather out-of-place palm trees, which is not native to Malifaux. Uh, for some of you, Nemo especially, 
these weird trees, and this is the first time you've seen this. And standing tiki torches line a narrow pathway uh, up to this big building that looks like an English manor. And in front of the door is a large bamboo archway where the words The Explorer Society are spelled out in bamboo. Uh, standing at the front of this door is a very large man. He has tall, wide shoulders, a Native American complexion. Uh, there's a braid that's sort of draped over his shoulder. He's wearing a vest and pinstripe pants. And as you kind of walk up this curling walkway of tiki torches, he folds his arms and says, My apologies, folks, but I'm afraid we're all booked up for the evening. Actually, I was hoping I might be able to speak to Maxine, maybe get a form filled out. We're not here to drink, although we wouldn't mind having a drink or two, you know, filling the coffers. But I've got some business to attend to. The doorman narrows his eyes and looks at you, Mead, and says, oh, Explore me. Uh, there's some society business going on inside. Can you vouch for your friends? Oh, yeah, of course. They're my compatriots. They've helped me explore my uh, most recent... Um, area of i've got all my writings in the bag here got you know hopefully i can turn those in while i'm here as well but um yeah they're um perfectly trustworthy folk i've had them um accompany me keep me safe it was a bit of a dangerous one he does the ones over where he like looks around make sure there's no one close behind you and says all right head on in thanks you throw, not throw, but open the doors, Meath. You enter a large foyer with a black iron chandelier hanging from the domed roof. A large fireplace sits towards the back of the room with two huge ivy tusks mounted next to it. Immediately, all of you, your vision is overwhelmed with the clutter of taxidermy. Exotic, colorful birds standing on branches mounted on wooden plaques. A spotted jaguar is perched mid-hunt on a shelf next to some leather-bound books. The head of a lion, mid-roar, is mounted above the bar. Foreign tea masks, paintings of wild jungles, a six-foot-wide map with pins dictating monument discoveries. There's a lot to take in. And from behind the mar, or from behind the bar, a man with large spectacles and a glorious brown beard shouts across the room. I swear, if you fuck up the carpet, I'm going to fuck up your face. <laughs> Meanwhile, a stout pot-bellied fellow in a bowler hat is currently struggling to drag a massive head. He's pulling it by the curved horns. Me. You quickly recognize the fang teeth and purple skin. It is the head of a mature Nephilim. Oh. Name is like... Just makes a face. <laughs> From behind a tall velvet chair next to the fireplace, a bulky gloved robotic arm taps the ash off a cigar. The owner of the cigar speaks. Damn your carpets, Pierre. I didn't put seven bullets into that beast just to have it collect dust in the attic. Robbie, be a good fellow and put your bloody back into it. Great. Bray is not moving. That like this is this is not a comfy situation for Frey right now. It's him. All right, where the hell is Maxine? Let's make this quick. I'm gonna nudge me. Me. This is uh. This is this looks more like a hunter's body. People who know what the know uh 
about the, yeah. the Neverborn here. They just looks like they just know how to kill him. Hey, this is only a hunter's bar. We're not assholes here. <sighs> okay. This is the explorer's society, not the murderer's society. He doesn't know the difference. All right, so we won't be meeting your friend then. Okay. <sighs> Maeve is going to look around and see if they could see, I don't know, Maxine, anyone, anyone else who could let them into the library. Uh, apparently, and it dawns upon you, the reason that people aren't being let in is because this monstrosity is being dragged across the floor. So it's not populated. They're not filled up. It's just Robbie, apparently, who's dragging this head across the floor and Pierre, who's attending the bar. But the figure from the chair stands up and faces the party. You see a man about seven feet tall, mostly made of metal. His arms and left leg have all been replaced. His short black hair has a series of gray streaks, and his beard is stark white. A large machete in a leather, uh, with a leather cord around the handle is sheathed on his back, and a necklace of fangs, fangs adorns his neck. And you can see, like, along his shoulder are three human skulls that are sort of, like, tied up to cords that he's wearing ceremoniously. Uh, Meath, you immediately recognize this man as the founder of the Explorer Society, Bullard Cooper. He... Yep sees you and says, Ha ha! Me, my dear! How are you? Cooper, got another one of your trophies, I see. <laughs> what do you think of it? My latest trophy. This marvelous beast put up quite a fight. Took those bullets from my rifle like they were little more than an Indonesian dart. The fight even wasn't the worst of it. I lost three good men trying to remove the head. Foul blood in that one. Nasty stuff, these disgusting Neverborn. Must be so worth it, though, losing all those men just to be ahead a Neverborn. Mm. Well, I mean, the hunt must go on. Did you, did you explore any bit of it? Did you explore yeah, well, the, its Malif insides, at least? Well, Malifaux's always up for exploration, and I'll leave that to the scientists like you. One of these days, me, if you simply must accompany me to my private island, you can bring your friends, especially the big one. Frey, still looking at the Neverborn head, just asks, how the hell did you kill it? Can I get a target number eight notice from me, and Frey? Surely. After I move my giant water bottle. There we go. Is there a way Toby or I could assist him in this check, or is it just not anything we could help with? This is kind of a them thing because of who they are. I think Tobias is too busy looking at the fucking uh, decor anyway. He hasn't been anywhere like fancy like this since the uh, so atmospheric since the theater. Uh. Uh, he loves I'm the gonna, yeah, it's so spiffy. I'm gonna go ahead and take the six on it. Um, I think then I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat it. So that's an eleven for me. Because so, I pulled a two. <laughs> Frey is looking at the head and asking Lord Cooper, "How did you kill it?" And like this head is massive. Like, this thing's probably about four feet tall, and this person is struggling to drag it across. Frey's vision is completely focused on the head. But Meave, you've been around Lord Cooper quite a bit. And when he says this, inviting you to his island, he is grinning. But there's something unsettling about that grin. It doesn't seem so much like a grin but a showing of teeth like a predator that's very very eager to devour its prey 
you'd like that, Cooper, but you know me. Not really the hunting type, stature and all. Just not suited for it. Oh, well, I mean, it's not that we uh, have to have hunting. We could have the finest uh, scotch, burgundy, all sorts of whiskeys and whatnot. Hmm. I can have a whiskey here. Got too much work to do, Cooper. Gotta keep uh, things moving, right? Where are you heading, then? What How is your... did you kill it? Um, there's like a dead-eye stare as he looks at you, Frey, and says, Well, the things you have to understand about the Nephilim is their hide's thick. It was a lot harder to kill it because I couldn't shoot it in the head. Didn't want to ruin the trophy. Gotta let the fangs reflect. Keep a nice, nice item to hang on the wall. So I put seven into its chest. It came coming at me like a wild, raging animal. No humanity in that beast. Like an elephant that you threatened its club. But I put it down. It came and came. Bullet after bullet. But eventually it fell at my feet. Almost as if it acknowledged its superior hunter. And I put my head on its skull. As my friends slowly sawed it off. And now, everyone can see how terrible ruthless and worthless than ever bore ha ha surprised we don't have any humans mounted anywhere we've got a few terrible ones of those as well well humans still have their humanity but beasts beasts are beasts <sighs> maybe you got a point I'll light up a cigar. I'm uh, I'm uh, right there with you, Mister uh, Mister Cooper. It's uh, yeah, Neverborn are scary. They should uh, the the monstrous ones that be put down. They're uh, not that friendly. So, is there any chance of getting a drink, or is this conversation only? Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Pierre, Pierre, and he says, uh, I'm sorry about this certain circumstance. Uh, please, we have a few exotic cocktails. Uh, more of the fruit variety to taste the exoticness of different exotic places. I think Meve is actually here on official business if she's allowed to, or they're allowed to talk to anyone other than um, Cooper. Uh, well, he might be able to help me as well, but Pierre, um, I'll take whatever you feel like making. The uh, Kogan Knox star in season, uh, Lord Cooper, has done a lot of work in making sure that we have the freshest ingredients. Despite him fucking up my rugs, and Lord Cooper's like, Damn you, man! Fuck your rugs! This is a trophy worthy of of several golden medals! And it, like they just bicker for a little bit. Pierre's like, pss, 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 pss. I'm sorry. I am very uh, attached to this establishment, and sometimes I get furious and deny the custom mail. Uh, yes, uh, and like he like brings out coconut shells and essentially makes you all like the fruitiest drink with like it's in half of a coconut. It's a pina colada, but there's like mm -hmm. a little umbrella in it, and he's like. He says, I know not if you have had the coconut of the distant tropics, but it is in season now. And it is sweet. It is nectar. The coconut. I haven't had a coconut since I was back home. I'll be happy to take one. Thank you, Pierre. That shit down. Um, I'll um, let me know how much I owe you uh, and we'll take it out of my pay. We will put it on the tab. Thanks. All right, Cooper. Uh, my friend's right. I didn't come here for drinks. Although, they're nice. But um, 
had some research I would like to do. Um, I don't see Maxine around though, and I do have some research to turn in as well. That might be of use. It's about the um, the mine by innocence. Research. Did mm. you kill anything? A mm, couple of things, but more importantly, there's um ancient writing uh, in the mine. Very interesting. Certain members will find it um, particularly useful, I'm sure. Well, I mean, you know Maxine with her long process. I'm afraid with her not being here, there's little I can do to allow you down into the archives. Are you, are you sure? I mean, I wouldn't have to bring all my friends. They could, um stay here and listen to more of your wonderful tales of your conquests. I, I, I understand it would be a bit of a challenge to get everyone down there with Maxine's strictness as they're not strictly working with you yet. But um, I've just got some things to turn in and um, wanted to have a peek at something before we headed back off, see if uh, we had any information, you know. <laughs> well... Let's go to the chase, Neve. I don't like that Maxine has taken over the society that I founded. Mm. What benefits me if I can bypass all the bureaucracy and whatnot and have that and bullshit? Oh, that's a fantastic question, Cooper. No need to dance around it. Looks at Tobias, looks at Cooper. I've got information on um, Neverborn writing. It might not seem important, right? I know it's not really your area. Um, but um, here's the thing. I have reason to believe there are some powerful beings locked away somewhere in the world here. And that what's going to lead me to them is the Neverborn riding. So if that's the case, I'm sure you'd want to be the first one there to um, slay the beasts if that's what they are. He looks around. There are a few bare spots on my wall. Well, practically a god would be quite the trophy, wouldn't it? I'll need locations. When I know them, I'll see what I can do. But I can tell you about the mine. There's really nothing in it that we... Uh, there's nothing in it right... You know, now there's it's just writing. But, um, you know, maybe, maybe I missed something. The guild's out of there, I think. So now's the time to go looking. He lights up another cigar, takes a big inhale holds it in his metal hand and says the greatest thing a man can do is test himself against his betters you want me to bypass all the bureaucracy but I need something I need something to test myself against I'm not going to let you down there with empty promises. Oh, I might find something, says Meeve, the non-hunter, the scholar. I want something concrete. I want to know that at the end of the day, I have something I can raise my rifle to and challenge myself as a man. Interesting. Well, we might have something like that. I don't know. Tobias, do you think we have anything like that? I mean, there's the sandworms out there. The jailers to this uh, thing that was supposedly in there. Mm, yes. Yeah, there, we did see a sandworm. Have you fought one yet? It, we watched it eat and entire person um prototype and all 
yeah, joyful. Yeah, arm wrestle a sandworm. Takes a big inhale of the cigar and says, Yes, that might do. But, right in my experience, there's something pleasurable about hunting a beast that can think. And he walks over to Frey and very invasively begins just kind of like grab his arm and measure his muscles and says, this one, I have something about that. How about this? We'll put it on a, a loan. If you can't give me something of interest, well then, this one, this boy, this right. thing will okay. do. Okay, so you're saying you're too small and weak to fight a sandworm, so you want to attack a regular man. I think I understand what kind of person you are. Not at all. Beasts are no longer important. I need something thinking to really challenge me. Something that can lay traps. Something large enough with an animalistic instinct like this boy here. And he just like puts his cigar out on Frey's chest. Okay, so you're saying you want to hunt my friend. Is that what we're getting at? Because All right. that's a little invasive, don't you think? I'll, uh, take a look at the burn on my chest. Watch it heal up. All right. Tell you what, you let my friend do what they need to do. And, uh, I'll match the, I'll match his puff of the cigar. We'll see who's the better man here. Freddy, you don't have to entertain him. No. I... I would never hunt another human. But a beast, a monster, well, that's a different story. You have any idea mm. how people go about Becoming half-bloods, do you care? I have ideas about how people going about things, but then again, we're not talking about people. I tend to disagree, but you know that already, I would say. So this is probably going to be circular. I'll do a uh, quick, quick thing, Brent. Looking at the Nephilim head, would I... Is there any shot in hell that I'd recognize this thing? Uh, you do not recognize it as like like I, an identity, like someone that I've met. right. Okay, but you've been around it enough to recognize it as a mature nephilim. So yeah. nephilims have like different levels of matureness. This is like, unless you're ancient, like this is this is this is a bad boy. This is this is not something that is easy to kill. This is something that if you were to go up against it, you would get destroyed. Yeah. 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 Right. I'll uh I'll catch him, I'll look him in the eye. Just say. It's cute that you think you've killed monsters. I I'll grab him by the shoulders and turn him around. You think that's a monster? You haven't seen a goddamn thing. Let my friend downstairs. <laughs> oh, I like this one. Yes. Um. Oh, how can I? Good boy, good boy. You gave me shivers down my spine when you talked to me like that. Oh, the savagery of an exotic race, a nephilim, no doubt. Oh, oh. Whew. Oh, I haven't been this excited in several years. I look forward to hunting you. And he puts his hand, his metallic hand on your shoulder. Yes, yes, I will let you down. Um, Just remember the deal. Uh, Something more interesting for me to hunt. Otherwise, your friend, I will give you a sporting chance. I do not enjoy hunting without sport. I will give you a head start. Maybe, uh... 
some knives, items, lay some guns around my personal, my personal uh, island. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure, sure, I, yeah, whatever the hell you want. Mm-hmm. Oh, find something for you to hunt, Cooper. There's plenty of bad shit in this friggin' world. <laughs> this one, this one right here. Oh, I would love to have his head on my personal wall. Um, uh, hand over the paperwork. Mm, right, yes. Shuffles in, pulls out a stack. Here you are. Make sure it gets to someone who can use it. Documentation. Yes, yes. And uh, like he just starts signing, signing, signing. Like, how many of you are going downstairs? I can have two. Yeah, um, I'll take that one. Points to Tobias. He's a literate sort. Very well. Uh, the rest of us can have a drink. You, the uh, <laughs> human and uh, the small child. All right. Anyway, enjoy your drinks. We're going to head down and um Are you would you be able to issue the pay for my research or um you know, should oh, I just Oh, yes, yes, I've written it all in there. <laughs> you you're fine. Right. You're fine, babe. Always Thanks. a pleasure. Um come, come. Let's talk to the bar. What is it like to rip the throat out of a human with your bare teeth? He says to Frey, as uh, you two descend into the library. Come on, Tobias. Ameev is going to get a few steps down the uh, <clears throat> stairs before he gets before they go. I'd like to have his head on my wall. This Fuck guy. Her. Okay. This guy. This guy is uh is nuts. Mm-hmm. Do you want to hunt? Frey? He's the mon. He's the monster. Not. Not the. I don't know. I don't know if the thing on his wall was evil or not, but I'm the real monster is upstairs, having a drink with, with Nemo, thing, Ellie, and Frey. The, the, the one he wants to kill. This is this guy. I think he gets off has, on it, Tobias. This guy's got information for us. Him? No. But the society does. Ever, most of the other people in here uh, that work in the uh, Explorer Society are actually, you know, people who like to explore and learn things. He's just a prat. Right, anyway, so let's let's find something to keep this guy off Frey's ass. This is okay. We'll <laughs> we'll cook some. We'll we'll. I am sure we'll cook something up. Make someone angry enough. Uh, mm-hmm. And we'll just send Cooper after them. Just gotta convince him that uh, they're more interesting to hunt than Frey. Yeah, which is I guess. actually. <laughs> More difficult than one might imagine, because I would love to see Frey behead him, but I didn't want to put Frey through that. Mm. I mean, we should have sent him out to Asha, huh? Oh, it's a shame. Although, outward, outward um, conflict between the Explorers uh, Society and the Guild. I don't, I don't know if he'd buy into that, but if we could convince him that one of them was never born, I'm sure he'd go straight for it. Yeah, I'm sure. <sighs> You know, you never know who's a half blood nowadays, huh? I didn't know Frey was a half blood. That's news to me. That's news to you. Yeah. Oh. Um. Yeah. Well, look, Tobias. There's a lot of um. There's a lot of ways people can become half bloods. Humans can become half bloods. Um. And it's usually a very painful process, and usually it's not a process that they consented to. So, uh, don't think too deeply about it Frey is just Frey right right okay I, I uh we'll, we'll cross that bridge later I guess um there's Eddie there's Eddie now there's Frey now there's oh my god all right I'm, I'm remember what Eddie. I said okay. remember what I said Tobias some of them are among you just trying to live their lives you've just seen the monstrous ones all right, let's 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 find out about concept because this is. Let's have a uh, look. I'm ready for something that not makes sense, but you know what I mean. <laughs> the areas I think we should look in: Neverborn and um, Magic. I don't know if this thing was Neverborn. Do you know? I mean, they they put it in there, right? It was it had Neverborn scratch all over the place. I assume. Yeah, so it probably was at one point. So we should. Um, Anything to do with the Neverborn, they should have um, one of these bookcases, should have some files or 
maybe one of the filing boxes. All right. I'll start on the bit cases. You start on the file boxes. All right. So, yeah, sounds like a plan. You guys head down. Uh, Meve, you know, you know how the Explorer Society works. Uh, on the surface, they are like a niche bar where you can come and have a good drink and everything. The library is hard to get into, but you mm. bypass that. The library is down in the basement. This establishment is built on catacombs. Mm -hmm. And when they came, they found all the different skeletons and like their history. They moved them very gently to like a graveyard, buried them, and turned the entire catacombs into a library. So now you have like these empty concaves that are just filled with books where dead once rested. Uh, you get down, there is a small table where Lau is sitting. Uh, you've been down here a few times. Lau usually wears like a silken robe, is completely, has like a bald head, looks at you and says, Ah, yes. What is it you wish to see tonight? Hi, Lau. Um, we're looking for some sort of specific information on... Um... Well, primarily on Neverborn, so um, if, if you want, um, we can look through ourselves, or if you, um, I guess I can give you a little more detail if you want to find it. Hmm. I recommend you walk down the third aisle from the left. Don't mind the shadows. There should be some books there that should captivate your interest. I never do mind, let me know. Thank you. We'll, uh, we won't be too long. Knowledge is often best found in candlelight. Could I perhaps offer you a candle? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. He hands out like a half-burnt wax candle and just passes it to you. Thanks. Um, we'll give a shout if we need to find anything else. Only shout if you need something. Don't shout if you're afraid. All right. Well, I'm not actually going to actually shout in any way. I'm just going to go this way. Have fun. Thank you. Um, Meave is going to look to Tobias and just go. <sighs> so those files, uh, I'll, I'll go over there. You go over there. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, this, this place is full of characters. Okay. Oh, this area is so much better than up there, isn't it? It's homey. It's homey, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have Cooper. And mm -hmm. Meave's going to go to one of the catacombs. <laughs> Yeah, I guess Meanwhile, <laughs> uh, back up in the bar, Cooper has been drinking heavily, and he is fascinated with you, Frey. Uh, a little sloshed, he stares at you and says, Ha <laughs> ha! So, beast, have you ever looked a man in the eye? and strangle the life out of him. Seeing seen that look when they stare at you and the life of your victim is strangled out from your own hands. Seeing that, that you, you're taking life, you're choking it out. Of a, a prey. Have you ever have you ever done that? Can't say that I haven't, partner. And uh you get to know people more than you ever want to by doing it. Why? 
Are, are you denying your inner instinct? Life is, is predator and prey, and you're, I mean, let's face it, you're, I mean, you're a, a predator, you're, you're, you're not a person, you're a beast. If that were the case, I wouldn't be ordering a whiskey neat right now. <laughs> Pierre really comes over. Right? Thank you, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and he's like, uh, uh, I am sorry, uh, your glass is empty. What would you like next, uh, Monsieur Olafrey? Bottle, whatever you got. Uh, he looks at Cooper, who's kind of swaying in his seat, and says, eh, "Perhaps, I yeah, of course." Cooper, I've been very impressed by how you handle your liquor. Do you think you could outdrink me? Well, I feel that would not be fair, since you are quite sober and I am quite drunk. Thing is that you're holding it so well and you're such a strong, large, virile man, and I am just a little girl. Unless you think you can't do it. Perhaps on another day. Oh, so you can't. That's unfortunate. It's not that I can't, it's just that you have an excellent head start and I want to stay sober enough to talk to this monster. So how many of them have you killed? Uh, uh, Nephilim? Yeah. Well, the babes are... I mean, there's no glory in hunting that. I usually just... <gasps> blow their head off. Uh, no need for a trophy. Probably about uh, 50 or 40 of those. The young ones... A little more fun. The brain develops and they can actually think, be clever, but still too easy. As far as the adults, this, this is my first. Mm. And oof. What a hunt. The way it charged. That wild froth foaming from the mouth eager for my blood <laughs> not not that there's much left in me mind you all these mechanical parts clearly you're not the man you think you are what do you mean by that uh you look like a goddamn vending machine by the looks of it well, Not much man left. <laughs> we must sacrifice ourselves for those to understand the dangers of the world. I have sacrificed greatly hmm. to show man. Show man. <laughs> yes. People must know how dangerous the Neverborn are. How and vile and vicious. Lost your limbs as a message. You went here, bite my arm off, so everyone knows that their arms can be bitten off. We wouldn't have figured that one out ourselves. I don't like the tone you're taking, little lady. I'm sorry. You understand that I'm a lord of my own islands and I've shot people for less disrespect. A big man on campus shoots with a gun. You talk to me about strangling people. Well, I've done a lot more than that, friend. And I'll tell you what, I don't need to pack heat to do it. So you show her any more disrespect. Mm. We'll start that hunt a little early. He smiles, pulls out a pistol, cocks it, and puts it to Nemo's head and says, Well, 
I suppose this is what separates the beast from the men. You are in my establishment. I have killed far bigger things than you. But if you would like to continue this, please do, and I will pull the trigger. Frey grabs his drink and says, put the goddamn gun away. He looks at Nemo and says, no matter how savage they are, you can always tame a beast. Uncocks the trigger. Puts it back in his holster. And we're going to cut back to Toby and Meave. You know, me. I hope Nemo and Freya are doing all right upstairs. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure they're fine. I mean, you know, they can handle a little banter, right? Yeah. How hard can it really be to talk to the seven foot tall vending machine? No, it can't be that hard. Mm, he's a bit of an ass, but you know, a lot of hot air. All right. Uh, find anything? Uh, mm, I got this, this, and this. Is it important? What did I find, Brent? <laughs> Right, so I'm going to need uh, either a history or literacy check. Target number 11 from both of you. Now, right. before you make this check, Toby, mm. there's a voice that pops up into your head and says, I am very offended, Toby. You are wanting to look up my secrets but I haven't dived into your mind. I mean, if there was anything you wanted to know about me I would tell you every successful relationship is built on trust and I personally feel that you are breaking that trust, Toby. I mean, personally I don't know much about you. Personally you did kill a bunch of dudes on a uh, on a zeppelin out in the desert. When I asked for a bird. Personally, Personally, I haven't gone far into your deep dark secrets, but if you want to do this, I can. And you, you there... live in my head. You see everything I see. You know everything there is to know about me. I don't know your memories. I have respect, Toby. Mutual trust. I haven't dug into those secrets but if you want to do this I suppose the gloves are off as they say in the fighting bits I'm not hurt Toby I'm just disappointed well I'm disappointed people can still work together if they're uh, worth it well, they can we but actions have consequences and there may be some consequences to this, Toby, if you wanted to go down this route. I wanted to have a friendly, symbiotic relationship where we could get along. But if you want to dive into my past, well, I see how it is. I'm not... I got a few secrets, but I'm not creating things out of nothing. I'd like to know where that comes from. I'd like to know how dangerous it is. I already said I'm willing, I've been willing to use it. I just want to know how knee deep I'm getting into and it, into what exactly. Well, that's fine. I mean, I would have told you when I was ready, but apparently you're going to dig it up. If don't worry, if there's, something, if there's anything bad we can work through it together and i can't fully trust you if i don't know everything about you 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 said it yourself you can dig into me and that's fine but i also have to dig into you we gotta trust each other here pal we gotta trust that what we find we can we can still work together because i respect you as a living entity i'm not going to dig into you which you can dig into me, that's fine. But actions have consequences, Toby. I'll give you permission to dig into me. No, I'll give no, you permission. no, no. Well, it's okay, you don't have to do it. 
but it's there. Actions have consequences, Toby. What you're going to do will have a consequence. But run along, do your thing, bond with your cursed to death and madness necromancer. That's fine, go along. Just remember, when you want my help, actions have consequences, Toby. I'll say nothing more. You have fun. Run along. Maeve. Maeve. Yeah, Tobias. What's uh what's going on? <laughs> let's uh let's 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 look up some look some shit up. Let's look some shit up. I'm Alright. All right, yeah, we're going to do a target number nine literacy or history check. Jeez Louise, <laughs> I'm pulling terrible. Um, hold on, but I might have it. Let's see. Do you have it? Uh, yes, just barely. It's a nine history. You know what? You know what? You know what? I'm going to hmm. cheat this. I'm gonna cheat this concept. <laughs> I'm gonna cheat this. Oh, you scared me. Um, uh, I'm gonna cheat this, and I'm going to with an eleven. Uh, I'm gonna put down my eleven to show concept what's what. All right, you lay down the law. I mm -hmm. guess we shall say. Uh, you guys move through the library. You are looking for informational books. And eventually you find a book that is written by, uh, uh, God, what's her name? <laughs> I wonder what we'll find. I'm just so excited to learn everything there is to know about my new friend. Maxine Agazi. Uh, it's one of her personal journals. Mm. And like, you kind of pull out a few books and like, you see it stuck back behind there and you come back and it's a journal about the history of tyrants and the complications of them. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. So, did did you cheat? I I got. Was that me that found that, or was it Tobias? Uh, I mean, both of you made the check, okay. so I think you both kind of like have that moment where like you pull the books back, me pulls it out, Tobias sees it, and there's that like. Oh, nice. we, 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 we both we both reach for it at the same time on the same shelf and it's like oh <laughs> we're like oh that I bet that's the one this looks this yeah you're right this does look like it uh all right concept let's see what secrets you got in your in there yeah yeah grab uh here let's see just kind of cracks it open um holds it upside down like so Tobias can and is kind of trying to uh, so Tobias can look at it and is kind of trying to browse it upside down as well. Mm. Just kind of flipping page to page. What do we find? So you guys read through it. It is a extensive journal where like some of it, me, you have to explain to Toby because it's written in Old Neverborn. Okay. Apparently she also speaks it, writes it down, and like you're telling him back and forth it talks about the dreaming. The dream is an actual plane of existence where things can be pulled from. During the age of the tyrants, the tyrant nightmare began to corrupt the dream. And during that, there was a group of, in the book, like, doesn't really know it just is like wizards mm -hmm. order or whatnot but like apparently like a group of powerful individuals who try to combat nightmare to stop nightmare from corrupting the dream so they created something they created a idea a dream manifested a concept so to speak that could combat combat nightmare 
But as time went on, Titania became corrupted. The concept also became corrupted and became less focused on stopping Nightmare and more focused on expanding the dream. The possibility. Mm. I think we found what we're looking for, Tobias. There are um, Neverborn linked to um, this dream it speaks of. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's what your friend is, but I think your friend was created by them to fight this tyrant, is what it sounds like. Okay. Well, if it's strong enough to fight a tyrant, it's definitely strong enough to take down the guild. That's that's exactly what we wanted. Yes, but um, as far as this uh, book here says, he was also they it the concept it was also corrupted in a way. Um, wanted to focus more on expanding the dream rather than fighting the tyrant. So just. Be mindful of that, I suppose. It wants to expand the dream. Okay. It's a plane of existence, so... And I guess it was sort of... I mean, in a way... His home? Okay. Well, it... It it, it did its own thing, right? It wasn't, it wasn't possessing anybody. It wasn't part of anybody. I don't know. It was in there by itself. It was. It was in this. It was in this jail by itself. Well, that's true. Maybe Toby, just... I get really offended when you talk about me like I'm not here. You were in this thing. I well. It'd be rude to exclude. Okay, concept. It'd be rude to exclude other people from uh, conversations. Is that not true? I mean, it's rude to talk about you when you're not here. It's rude to talk just us two when Mead can't hear you. Hold out your hand. And if they take it, I could talk to them instead. What's it saying? Here, just hold... hold, uh... He's in... in... Hold on his hand. Here, we're we're, we're working on something here. Uh, Okay. I'm going to trust you, Tobias, and puts their hand in Tobias's hand. Uh, You feel kind of like a pulse trying to move towards you. Do you accept? You have a click call. Yeah. Uh, Immediately, your head rolls back. Your eyes roll back into your head. And then you are no longer alone. And it says... How do you feel about going mad? How do you feel about living this lie where they think you're a discoverer and they don't know what you're drinking? Okay. I knew the that shit came drinking. from you. Can I hear this too or is it just, just me? No, only me can. Okay. You just hear me go, I know that shit came from you. <laughs> I should have figured. You act like you're all innocent, just gonna help to buy us out. You're trying to turn everyone against each other. Great. All right. Every necromancer goes mad. Your species was driven mad by necromancy. Call me a liar. Hold on to your facade, your Bullshit, you disgusting scholar that tries to live in facts. I know the truth. I know what happens. I know that there is madness, and madness comes for you. But you know what? Hang on to your sickness. That's all I wanted to say. You can send me back to Tobias because I find you boring. 
oh no, you're not going back until you listen to what I have to say. If you're going to come in here and spout your bullshit, then you're going to listen to me as well. We're not going to let you take Tobias from us. We're not going to let you turn him against everyone, making him a puppet of what you want because you think that you're right. All right, so the dream, fine, get it, great. You are angry because we figured out what you were. You wanted to keep it from him, leave him in the dark, make him make those sandworms and the birds and the whatever else he's done. That's great. Good for you. I'm not an idiot. And that's why you didn't want to be inside of me. Uh, Toby, you hear a voice in your head <laughs> that says, I don't know. Are you done listening to her ramble? She's probably going mad. I came back. Oh, fuck off. I mean, they're, well, they're they're insane. Let's face it. Can't wait to get that thing out of you, Tobias. Okay, so it 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 it, it doesn't like you. Okay. That uh, he, what? Okay, it doesn't like you. Um, so it wants to expand the dream. It. Okay, and it can be a little rude. I understand that. Uh, how? A little. I, from what I hear, the conversation didn't go well. Uh, so I'm going to filter what it says. Um, how bad? What, 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 do you, what do you know about the dream? How bad is that? Is that, like, terrible? Is that, like, are the consequences well, of expanding the dream? Oh, well, the dream itself, what little I know... I wouldn't say it's innately terrible. I don't know. Uh, this is something I'm going to have to do more research on. But I mean, do you... Do you want to bring dreams into reality? Do you want to blur that line? Do you want to... I mean, it's... How does that sound to you, Tobias? Does that sound like a good idea? It's, it's, it's working with me. You know, and it's it's working with us. And if we if we keep working to do what we're trying to do, do what I'm trying to do, you know, I know I, I know you don't like the guild too much either. I don't like the guild at all. But I also don't want to ruin the world. I don't know. I feel like there's got to be a middle ground. Are we gonna ruin the world by ruining the guild? No. Maybe. I don't know. That's not. I I mean, if you let this thing get too much power. We might be pushing it. That's what I'm saying. All right. I got the, the 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 way I see it is it's working with me now. It's working with me. Yeah, it has a goal to expand the dream, but like, we got to do this first. We got to take care of. Uh, we got to take care of our goals. And I got I got I got you keeping like keeping me grounded. I got Nemo keeping me grounded. I got, you know, everyone's... I, I, I got Ellie Watt looking out for me. I, I got I got you and Frey. You guys certainly don't like the guild. It did. You, uh, Frey doesn't like it because it tore up his hometown. And you don't like it because... Why don't you like it? They get in the way. Really. And I, I don't like groups that keep people down I mean they're just I know that there's an element of organization that was probably necessary at one point maybe still is but I think they've got too much I don't like anyone who's got too much power anyway speaking of too much power we've got the information we need let's um go up before um Lord Cooper gets a uh, bit of um an idea or something yeah i think uh i think i got a lot to think about let's uh set up this thank you i appreciate you helping me figure some my life out right now it's i i i a direction <laughs> yeah um just be careful tobias we're here if you need us we are um that thing's backhanded it didn't have anything to say to me. It just wanted to criticize me. It knows too much. Let's go. Okay. I. All right. All right, me. I need to follow them up. 
They go upstairs. What's happening upstairs? Cooper's yeah. put his gun away at this point, right? I'm no longer. Yes, total <laughs> brawl. <laughs> we yeah. an interesting scene to walk into if it's just, oh, they're at gunpoint. <laughs> just as expected. <laughs> You guys walk upstairs to this very, very intense scene where Cooper is standing up looking at Frey, who is sitting on the stool, just being like, tell me, tell me you ain't ever had that rage, that desire to kill him, boy. Cooper, how many times have you asked him this since we've been downstairs? I'll say Tobias, who has been with Nemo the longest out of anyone here, would definitely recognize Nemo is less than three seconds away from vaulting over the table and ripping this guy's ears off. Like, you are running a limited clock on the patients. <laughs> Nemo! Nemo! My good friend, have you had enough to drink? Are you okay? He's gonna, he's gonna grab her with the shoulders. Are you okay? What's going on? Let's, let's take a walk. Let's take a walk real fast. I uh, let herself be led away so that Frey and Meve can deal with what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna glance over at Meve real quick, just kind of give the nod, like you ready to go. Right. Uh, so I, I stand up and I look at Cooper and I go, "Tell me, you ain't naturally seven feet tall, are you? You have a good night." And as I walk out. My hand is slapped on the bar, but I just let the claws drag across the wood and dig. Okay. And then I walk right out the door. He's going to be like, sorry, Pierre. <laughs> you let the claws dig. Pierre is very disgruntled, but... <laughs> Motions to Cooper. <laughs> I, I mean, all you hear as you walk out, Frey, is just cackling laughter. Just happy, cackling laughter Laughter that's like, I hope you find something good. Otherwise, I'll see you soon, boy. If I gotta hunt you in Malifaux, I will. I will. I keep walking. I got you, nothing more to say. <laughs> you all step out. Uh, Maeve does the like as they're walking out. I... <laughs> so I'm going to set this up because we we had expectations for uh, Jake coming, but Jake got caught up in you know real life stuff. It happens. So Frey, you had talked about you wanted to have a scene with Toby. Um, I'll set it up if you want. Yeah, I think that's a good spot. Like, if you can set up something personal, like a place where you're sitting, maybe walking down the streets or something, we can do that. Yeah, so as we're walking back, uh, my, <laughs> my normally calm demeanor is long gone. I am just focused and trying not to lose it. I am white knuckling the whole way home hands at my side, not saying a word. As we get closer to uh, to our camp, hideout, room, whatever, uh, I'll just go, Toby, come take a walk with me. Oh, Now. Okay, okay. Dave's going to look at Ellie and Nemo and be like, Nemo, you got any of that hooch left? several bottles of brandy still in my pocket if you're interested yeah. oh that would be great let's uh yeah. let's go in i took a whole coconut from the explorer society as well so good at, at, that's the very minimal we should have done actually next time i think i'm gonna try and get one of his guns i need a gun well, he did try to shoot me in the head, so it didn't seem like the time. Oh. And he will explain that as they walk into the, the room. <laughs> what an asshole. <laughs> and uh, so Toby and I will start walking. And uh, I'll reach into my jacket. Just, again, white knuckle, very upset. Reach into my jacket. Pull out an apple. Feed the horse. 
oh, oh, okay. We're walking up to Callie. I start petting her to try try to calm down. And uh, I, I turn and I look Tobias dead in the eye and I go, Tobias, after what you heard tonight, what do you think of me? What, that this guy's calling you a beast and whatnot? Now that you have a firm grasp of what I am, what do you think of me? You were nervous in the theater that you didn't have your gun around something that just wanted to watch a show. You're walking around with the same damn thing. Claws, hammer. You've watched me hurt people. You've seen what I can do. What do you think of me? The, the, the more I think about this, he's a pet, Callie too. The more I think about this, the 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 le- the less I think. I mean, the 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 Neverborn are still, you know, they they're still out there. Like the Nephilim, I've heard stories about them. I've heard stories about the Nephilim being big monsters who tear people in half. But then there's also Neverborn who are who are like Eddie, who are like, I don't know, are, are you an Everborn? Were, were, were you cursed? But whatever you are now, you know, you're just trying to live your life now too. And you, more importantly, you followed us into town, no aiming to help us out and we'll help you out. It's a symbiotic relationship we got going here. The, the There's point. this uh, somber scene as Toby is telling you this. Uh, you are walking down an alleyway at this point in time all the lights of the lamps have the gas has flickered on and you hear just the strum of a guitar as there's like a poor man sitting in the corner just playing as you're walking by the 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 more i think about this you know you're just trying to live your life eddie's just trying to live his life it's maybe they're not all bad you know, maybe they're not. And he's, he's thinking back to concept at this point. Maybe they're not all bad, you know? So we uh, started starting to calm down just a little bit. And I just take a deep breath and. <sighs> Tobias. I'm wondering the same damn thing myself. And I'm not. I don't know what I am yet. I don't like the way it's going. Things are getting worse without going into too much detail about it. Just know, whatever call you make, whether you have the gun in your hand or not, just make that call with confidence and I'll, I'll trust you made the right decision. Meve trusts me entirely. I need someone to keep me in line as well. I don't know what I am or what's going to happen. Uh, all right, Frank. Let, let me tell you this. I'll do my best to keep and put his hands on his shoulders. You, I'll do my best to keep you in line. But let me tell you one thing. Let me try to settle your mind a little bit here. You, you sat there, took all that guy's bullshit. Oh, Lord Cooper, all his bu- bullshit. And he didn't do anything to him. But he sat there and threatened you. You must have more humanity than he does. Took a lot. That took a lot, man. Thank you for that. It must have taken a lot. I, I, can, I, can, see, I can see your knuckles. I can see the blood freshly coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Swear to God, I'm going to make that man's head a gumball machine someday. Uh... He deserves it, but you sat there and took it. That takes a lot of effort. And more than a mindless monster can muster, that's for sure. I appreciate that, man. Thank you. Sure thing, pal. Slap on the shoulder. Thanks for sticking around. All right. I want to try a coconut. I haven't tried a coconut yet. 
that that uh, that pina colada thing he gave us. That was pretty good. <laughs> let's let's go back and see if Nemo's got one. Yeah, we'll go back up no, to the room. Inside, Nemo has poured straight hooch into a whole coconut. It's not a pina colada. <laughs> <laughs> It's close she enough. Don't make one. She doesn't believe in cutting alcohol. You have it straight. Maybe add a little flavor, but you want it as straight as possible. Oh, yes, 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 yes. 100%. Uh, Frey, if you've got like a... a Meave has been drinking <laughs> already. Probably took several shots as soon as they got in. Frey, if you have like a knife or something, you can just like scrape at the white part of the cake and you can eat it. It's great. Mm -hmm. No way. Mm, no, you can. It's a fruit, uh, I think, Sam sort Hill? of. Is it, it's a fruit or a nut? Uh, well, I don't think it's a nut. Well, it's right well, there. It says it's a nut. It's a cocoa nut. So it's like a chocolate nut, right? I think we spend like. the rest of the night debating about whether a coconut <laughs> is a fruit or a nut. Yeah. I yep. peel it with a knife and we eat it. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Bar snacks. <laughs> you guys have exotic fruit, and I think that's where we are going to end it. <laughs> Bonding the place is any a common enemy <laughs> and Ellie is silent as ever <laughs> yeah. Ellie goes back to sleep <laughs> Ellie was actually asleep in the hotel room the whole we time. left her there she said, go on without me you know we should I be more concerned <laughs> Jake we miss you and we love you just so you know <laughs> we do we do we go and make sure you know none of her essential organs have fallen out I do pluck thing. another toenail off accidentally. Oh, gross. That, that's How my do you bad. Accidentally? Are you just poking around at no. Ellie's feet? Just Freak. like I took her boot off to check and I just popped one of her toenails off and it. Gonna end in alcohol and All fruit. Right. Instead, here we are. Here I we take are. the toenail and I place it back on her foot All as though right. it's just sitting there so wow. she can think that she took it off. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. So <laughs> disgusting. Um, all right. So uh, thank you everyone so much for joining us here for another fantastic episode of Twisted Veil. Vale. Um, we want to thank everyone who has joined uh, the Ink and Liar channel and our little community that we're building over here. I uh, want to shout out to um, Prez Prep P9. Ten, uh, the euphemism forty-two, um, pan, pan chick o one three, arc muzz the fallen, uh, razor, uh, canarix the pigeon one, no mer nope, uh, miss and Mister Zealous with the follow. Shout out to also uh, frost giant, ow, I think is how I'm gonna go with that. Um, so yes, so shout out to everyone who has joined us. Um, thank you so much for doing that. If you also want to support the show, you can follow us on all of our social medias everywhere at Ink and Liar. Uh, the next time you can find us is tomorrow on Iron Valor. Uh, we'll be wrapping up a Curse of Straw campaign. So if you want to see a TPK live on stream, you can see it there. Uh, <laughs> 7.30 Central Standard Time. Um, I'll be there. There we go. Uh, Friday is uh, Fridays is normally short rest, but we will not have one this week. Um, actually, tomorrow's stream is the last stream we're going to have uh, because then we are taking a week off, uh, and we'll be back on Monday the fourteenth. Uh, on that Monday the fourteenth, you can find Fates in, which is a homebrew five e campaign. Uh, Deanna is in that show, um, as well as myself, at seven thirty Central Standard Time. And, of course, we're here every Tuesday. The next time you'll see this show is Tuesday, uh, June 15th. Uh, and that's when you can see all of these wonderful people again for another episode of Twisted Fail. So, shout out to our partners at Nine Realms Gaming. Go to their store, buy their stuff, use our promo code, all those things. So, we will see you all here in two weeks. Oh, and we're, go we're going our raid too, so bye! Bye! <laughs>